Hello everybody and welcome back to the Endgame series. And today we are going to look at Bishop Endgames. Hello Chess So Hard and Smart Sky, welcome. So again we are going to be looking at positions from this famous book Dovritsky's Endgame manual, this one. And so far we have been looking at Pawn Endgames knight in games and now we have started with the bishop in games the so bishop in games are quite complicated and there are different uh, ideas in it and also different situations in bishop in games we have the same colored bishop opposite colored bishop we have bishop against the pawns and so on All right, so let us begin. I am on lead chess. First position for today, king c7, pawns on g5, black pawns f7, f5 c4 black king e8 and of course the bishop on d8 so this is a composition by dovritsky in 2000 bishop versus disconnected pawns and this is white to play and draw Bishop f6, we need to calculate f4 and if bishop can stop both the pawns at the same time or not. So if we start with bishop f6, f4 and what to do after that. Hello Daksh, welcome, nice to see you. Yes, you are present. Why are you angry? What happened? So let me think, bishop f6, f4, king d6, I will play this move. If we try to first stop this pawn, black will play f4. And let's say we try to bring the king f3. And now if we try to stop this pawn, black will play c3. And the bishop cannot stop both the pawns. I was playing a computer cheater and he was crushing me. Oh, that's sad. And also, by the way, again, yesterday we were playing a tournament and today morning I received a message that I lost to a cheater. So, indeed, one game that we lost was against cheater. What can we do? I understand you completely. Hello, Salambo. Maybe g6, fg6, I shouldn't have played 5 plus 0, I was playing hourly blitz for the first time and then guess what happened, oh that's sad, but we can't control these things, even I receive almost one message every day that I lost to a cheater, so let's just move past it, hello super f21, 
but you are right Aleph. this is uh, the idea of this position because now the bishop cannot control both the pawns same time so we have to try to keep all the pawns in the same diagonal f g6 and bishop g5 a bishop is stopping this pawn this pawn and this pawn same time on one diagonal white saves himself with a pawn sacrifice so first move g6 is excellent move and only way to make a draw fg bishop g5 and this they call it as the one diagonal principle the bishop now stops all these three pawns uh, same time and if black moves then we slowly bring the king and take these pawns thank you mad max for the compliment so this is how we do it and here after g6 black has one try after g6 he can try to play f6 so this is a tricky idea by black and now again if white takes bishop f6 he is in trouble because of f4 with the same idea So after f6, we have to just uh, play, not take the pawn, but, but, um, just king d6. Wow, king d6 move. And now the bishop cannot be taken because of g7. So king d6 is the move. King f8. And now king d5 or c5. And white draws. Because now if c3, we can take this. Oops. We can take this f6, c2. And again with the same idea that we have to try to keep the pawns in one diagonal. Your tactics is your power. <laughs> Hello, Ritik Singh. Yes, this is very cool. Now, next one. F6 was nice idea by Black, trying to trick White again to take Bishop F6. White King F2, pawns on A5 d6 f3 h3 h4 black king e8 pawns f7 e6 f4 bishop on d3 white to play and win hello fast book artist Last thinking, redeem, hydrate, and take care. Dr. Zweishinzak and Super F21. So we have three hydrate requests, and I will do that. And also posture check by Daksh. Thank you for following. System Chesser. Yes, today uh, Streamlabs is working as we see the alerts. So yes, we see the alerts. I am very happy about it because I don't want to miss it. Hello Samit Chess. So this is why to play and win. Thank you for following. I live for chess hello joe everybody's here now so we have three puzzle pawns a5 d6 and h4 and right now black is holding somehow thank you prm so far black is holding somehow all these pawns we just need to find a way to uh, make progress here 
Live for chess, you're from London. Greetings from India to you. Yes, we are still using Doritsky's book. This is a part of Endgame series and we started with Pawn Endgames and now we are looking at Bishop Endgames. So it's a training series where we discuss the positions from this Doritsky's book. h5 h5 king d7 h6 thank you for following zugzwang put the pawn on h6 king on b4 something should win <laughs> yeah it looks like something should happen right h5 king d7 h6 but look here what happens h5 Black will play king d7, h6, he takes on d6, and after a6, he just controls these pawns. And both the pawns are controlled like that. Black is threatening to play king d7 and take this. This is in fact a game position. Live for chess, you are absolutely right. King e1, double exclamation mark is given here. They say first move h5 is a mistake because black controls all the pawns and in fact wins the game. So king e1 is the first move. The king can drive the bishop from d3 square. So now this bishop is trying to control both the pawns. So we have to try to drive it away. Now here they have given two uh, variations. e5 and king d7. So king d7, they say king d2. And now bishop has to choose one of the diagonals. And if it goes to one side, we start pushing on the other side. And white wins in this line so let's say he plays bishop h7 now he is not in time because he has to first take it and then be promote on the other side so that is why we have to attack this bishop so in the game black played e5 king d2 e4 And now we will not take it because if we take it again the bishop defends on both the sides very well. So we just play h5. Now the pawn is blocking. Bishop b1, a6 and white won this game. Hello Ash, you're not late of course. This is in fact just our second position. Thank you for following J. Carmody. Yeah, this was easy after we find the idea that we have to move the bishop. That's that's the idea. Thank you for following. Now next is a bit difficult. Next is difficult. Thank you, lol twitch. King h1. Um, pawns on a2, d3, e5, g5, h4, black pawns g6, f7, d5, c6, knight on a6, king b3, king c3, bishop b2. White to play. First time on your stream. Welcome, live for chess. I hope you enjoy this series. White to play and win.
Yeah. The Arun redeem to hydrate and take care. H5 and G6. So H5, let's say black takes it. G6 takes. E6, then he tries to defend it from this side. Knight B4. Where to play knight B4? First move or... Maybe knight c5 first. <laughs> she only hydrates and does not take care. <laughs> okay, so one moment, let me think. So we have um, this pawn also can be important later. Or first a4 so many ways to start this to start with h5 or knight b4 or a4 knight b4 there is some idea to stop bishop a3 but when to play it okay let's see this looks quite complicated This is a composition by Platov in 1911. So first move h5. First move h5. We have to create some passive pawn. Gh. Now they have given a variation for king d3. If black plays king d3, then hg takes. And now just knight b4 or knight c5 doesn't matter. One of these check and followed by e6, e7 is winning for white. So after h5, gh. g6, fg. e6, bishop a3. And here they have given a lovely move, knight b4, double exclamation mark. Now king cannot take on e b4 because of e7, so black plays bishop capture b4 and a4. And surprisingly, black cannot stop both this pawn, the bishop cannot hold this pawns. King d4, a5, and there is no way to stop both these pawns. If king c5, there is e7 and winning for white. Very beautiful position this was. Yes, leave for chess. <laughs> GG. Alright, so now the next... Um, Next part of this chapter is opposite colored bishops. And they are very tricky. Opposite colored bishops are very tricky. So they say here that the stronger side must be alert whether going into an opposite colored bishop endgame or playing one out. Here it doesn't take long to stumble on a drawing counter chance and for weaker side going into opposite color bishop is sometimes the key sharply increasing the chances for a favorable outcome so many times in opposite color bishop endgames the material does not help even with extra pawns uh, the stronger side is not able to win
your expert on opposite color bishop, he says. So help us solve these positions. Bishop c2, black bishop b6, pawns on c4, h3, black pawns, h4, g5, f6, and e6. This is a white to play and draw. So as we see black has two extra pawns. King g4, this is a fortress puzzle. You have seen it, yes? Yes, this is a fortress. We have to create a fortress so that black is not able to make progress after that. Bishop g6. And how to make a fortress in this position? So black will of course want to make his king come here and then slowly play f5, e5 and try to push this pawns. Bishop b3. Bishop b3 with the idea c5. So after bishop b3, black will play bishop c5. And stop this idea. King g4, black will play king c7. And go to e5. Just in time. c5. c5, I will take this pawn. Hello, Mr. Sabon. So, Mr. Sabon suggests c5, then bishop b3. Yes, you are right. You are right, Mr. Sabon and system chesser. So, the first move is c5. We are two pawns down, but we have to sacrifice the next one also. Now, bishop takes this pawn. And we play bishop b3, forcing black to move this pawn to a dark square. Thank you for following, Rajat Gupta. And when black plays e5, bishop e6, king c7, and we have just built a fortress king by playing king e4. And now we just have to keep moving the bishop on this diagonal and not do anything else. And this is the draw because black cannot make a progress. Even if he moves the king and brings over to g3, it doesn't make any difference because h3 is defended. And he can never play these pawns, f5 or g4. So this is the fortress that white goes for. And the main idea is that we have to control these light squares. And now black bishop is useless in this position. Now next is a... Um, next is a... Uh, example that we have to understand not just solve king e4 black king e7 bishop on a4 and pawn e5 f5 white bishop on d2 and here they ask the question uh, what should black play or how should black make a fortress and make a draw in this position. So where should his king and bishop ideally be? Thank you for following Leo786. When did you learn chess? I have been playing chess since I was 6 years old. Thank you, Harshit. You have to attack from the front of the pawn chain. So this is what we have to know in this position. Thank you, Himanshu. 
Did you have a coach? Uh, not really. I studied on my own mostly. Yes, I'm self-taught. I got opportunity to uh, work in chess camps and these things, but never had a coach full time. Do you know we did? Of course, I know all the uh, top Indian players. Maybe Joe Baba is secret coach. <laughs> no, no. I only met Badur last year and I know him since just one year. This is um this is black to play. Let me change this. Let me make it black to play. This is black to play. The white pawns are going this side. And now where to keep this bishop and how to make a draw in this position. The idea is moving f5. This is black to play and draw. We have to make him play f6. If he plays f6 then we can control these light squares. Try to control these light squares. So generally white would want to play first e6. Let's say bishop he keeps on c3 and then play king e5. Thank you for the gift sub. James Plunder is here and he gave five Tire 1 community subs. Thank you so much, James Plunder. We were just talking about you and you're here. Hello, big hello to you. So here in this position, white would want to play e6. Then king e5 followed by f6. No idea how I'm alive. Yes, yes, yesterday you had a 10 hour stream. So you must be quite tired after that. Hope you had great rest. And looking forward for your streams. So white's plan is to play e6, king e5 and then f6. Just a second. My parents are calling me. Hello? Hale, a minute. Just a minute. They are at my door. I will just open and be back.
All right, so what is happening here? Let me see. So the question is here, uh, whether to play bishop d7 or bishop b3 to stop e6 and one is right and other is not. We have to stop e6, otherwise if white gets to play e6, then he is winning after e5 and f6. So bishop b3, bishop d7 or maybe bishop c6 start with. White threatens to continue e6, followed by king e5 and f6. To stop this plan, black must take the e6 square under control with his bishop. So there are two ways to do that, bishop b3 and bishop d7. So they say bishop b3 is a mistake. Bishop b3 is a mistake. Because first... Uh, white gives a check to see which way the enemy king goes. It's important to have the bishop preventing him from getting between the pawns after e6. So white plays bishop g5 check here. And then after the king moves, let's say f7, white goes like this. King d4, king c5, king d6 and then plays e6. And after king d4, if black plays bishop c2, there is e6. So black can't move the bishop. And this is how black loses this endgame. So that is why we have to play first move bishop d7. We have to play bishop d7. And now we have created a fortress. So they say this is the position to make a draw. Keep the bishop on d7 and just keep moving the king e7 and f7 so that now white cannot move the king and try to go this side and e6 will black will just take this bishop d7 let's say uh, white plays bishop g5 check king f7 now black merely waits, moving the bishop back and forth between c8 and d7. So now he can't move the king. So his idea is to keep playing bishop c8 and bishop d7. This, oof, this like this. Just c8, d7. And white cannot make progress in this position. Because white has to keep supporting this f5 pawn. He can't play e6 and f6 then... Thank you, James Wonder, for donation. Thank you so much. You are the best. And f6 is not good because then black will just play king e6 and keep the squares under control. What if white plays king e5? Where can he play king e5? So this is the position. He is, he is supporting f5 and there is no way to make progress. Doesn't matter if he gives check or not. He just waits bishop c8 and bishop d7. And there is no way to make progress from this position. You're from India, Karnataka. Greetings to you too. Hello, just to go. Good morning to you. Then bishop b3, bishop g5 and king d7. Which line? So first move bishop b3. Bishop g5, king d7. So this side, one moment. King d7 then they have given here king f4. So white goes the other side. Thank you for following. King f4, bishop a2. Thank you for following, potato, and welcome. 
and now black um goes white goes this way and king f6 followed by e6 so this is the idea of white so if we try to control from behind with bishop b3 he will give check and depending on our answer if we go king d7 white goes this side if we go king f7 white goes this side and wins yes that is winning if white is able to play e6 then it is winning system chess or you are from turkey welcome okay so now next position it is similar to this but one rank ahead one rank ahead so black king is on e8 pawns are on e6 f6 king on e5 bishop d3 and black bishop a5 do you speak russian no i don't speak russian but i understand the letters and very few words And now uh, the pawns are one rank ahead and black cannot save this position even with the same idea so let's try the same idea bishop d8 bishop g6 check or bishop b5 bishop b5 was also winning so one of these checks king f8 and king f5 and we have reached the same setup but now black cannot make a waiting move so in the previous position black could play d7 and c8 these waiting moves but this time the bishop has no waiting moves and black loses because of zugzwang if he moves the bishop away e7 and e8 queen if king g8 again e7 and e8 and this is winning for white King h5, pawns on g6, h6, and king h8, white bishop on d3, black bishop on a3. So this is the case about rook pawn. Now let's see the case about the corner. Thank you for following, Ezrin. Being at the edge of the board introduces new elements into assessment of the position. So the best way for black to make a draw in this position is to play bishop b2. Bishop b2. Thank you, Fendi Wen Corals. So now bishop b2. This is the easiest way they write. Bishop b2. And black has to play king g8, king f8 and just keep his bishop on h8. The draw is obvious. So the best way is to keep the king on f8. So let's say he moves the bishop, we just play this and keep the bishop on this diagonal. And no way white can make a progress in this position. But if white tries to lock the king, uh, so instead of bishop b2, let's say we wait and white is able to lock this king. Now we can't go to f8. Now there is another way to make a draw in this position. And now we have to play bishop f8. Now we play bishop f8. And the idea is that if white plays king g5 trying to go to this side, we just take this pawn and there is a stalemate. After king h6, it's a stalemate. So, there are two ways to make this draw. First is easiest is to bring the king to f8 and keep the bishop on this diagonal. And if white tries to lock us down like this with bishop c4. 
not bishop c3 because white will try to go from this side so that is why we immediately play bishop f8 yes in this case if we go this side bishop c3 white will play king g5 still we can give check no he will go king g4 king g4 and now there is no way to defend for this which book is this one this is dovretsky's endgame book Next one. White king d5, bishop h5, pawns on f5, c6, black king c7, bishop on e7. White to play and win. Bishop f8 is the best move here, yes. So we just need to know that if white traps the king, we have to go bishop f8 and then threaten to take the h6 pawn. Also locking us out with bishop c4 after king f8 doesn't work out because pushing g7 leads to a bishop sack. Yes, you are right. Equico. Greetings, Koshal. Bishop e8. Bishop e8, then king d8. Bishop d7. And then followed by king e6. And f6. King e6 here. Yeah, there are many ways to win this actually, I guess. So this is a composition by Salvioli in 1887. And this is an um, instructive example how to win this. So of course there are many answers and many ways to begin. So let's just see the idea. Bishop f3, King d8, King e6, Bishop b4, f6. Bishop b4 and we just go this side Bishop c3 check King g6 and this side and we wins like that we win like that so the idea in this position is that we keep the king occupied with the c pawn and then go to the other side and then go to the other side and help our pawn to promote Next is also an instructive example. White king e4 pawn f3 c6 bishop on d7 black king g5 bishop on c7. Composition by Yuri Averbach in 1950 and they say here that this is a draw this position is a draw they say this is a fortress and this is a draw but let me think if there is a way for white 
to make any progress. Here the white pawns are not past the bishop's diagonal, so black can draw. King f6. Yes, so the idea is that we have to stop both these pawns from um, moving any further. So let's say white plays king d5. Trying to go to king e6, we play king f6. Now the pawn can't be moved. And we should not let both these pawns move at all. And if white tries to go this side, let's say king c4, we just stop in time. We can even wait in d8. And we stop like that. King goes to b7, black king turns up to d8. Black can draw in large part because his bishop restrains both pawns along the same diagonal. So since the bishop is stopping both the pawns on the same diagonal, he is able to draw this. Now next one. Again a fortress position. What if the pawn was on f2? Is it winning? Um, I don't think it's winning because still you can't play f4, right? At some point. If it's um, further than f4, let's say on f5, then you have winning chances. Since the pawn cannot pass on f4, black stops that. King f1, black king c3. White pawn, no, there is no white pawn. Black pawn, e3, b4, white bishop f5, and bishop f4. White to play. Yeah, but if pawn is on f5, then he can win. And this is white to play and draw. Wow. Are you going to stream late night chess today also? I don't know. I don't know right now. I think E1. So black will try to play b3, b2 and then play king b3 and king a2. This looks very difficult because black has two pawns, they are very far away and, uh, and on first sight it looks black is just winning, right? King a2 also king b2. Doctors Weishenjung redeem posture check, okay. So these pawns are going this side. So let's see the analysis. So white plays king e2. Okay, doesn't matter first more, I guess. King e2. 
Vitri. There is no mention of King B2. But let's check B3. Maybe it leads to similar ideas. King D1. King B4, we just wait. King B2, yes. Now he finally goes to King B2. And when we reach this position, we have to play Bishop F7. Because black was threatening to play King A1 and B2. So Bishop F7. King A2. Bishop E6. King A3 and Bishop F5. And this is a draw they say. Thank you for following. And they say black can't make progress in this position. Because after King A2 or King B2, white plays Bishop E6. This, then this. For King C3, we just wait, right? Bishop F5. And if he plays B2, then... Of course, we just control both these squares, put the king on e2 and just move the bishop on this diagonal. So even on first move, if we play king b2, it will reach to similar positions, king d1. And after b3, bishop e6. And now black king can't move. Or if you first start with king a1, also bishop e6. And we stop this pawn. Yes, this is really a beautiful position. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. a7 this is uh, similar to what we just saw a6 d6 this time white has two extra pawns g5 king on c8 black pawn g6 and bishops on a3 black bishop on f3 this is black to play and draw so in these positions instead of finding the moves we have to find the ideas how to make a fortress or um, how to stop white from moving the pawns further. Hello, Sabrina. Black to play and draw. So now white has a threat here. If this is white to play, white will play d7. White will play d7. Now these pawns make a big difference in this position. So white can sacrifice this pawn by d7. And when we take, he plays king b8 followed by a7 and a8. This is white's idea now. So we have to try to play bishop c6 or bishop g4. One of these moves. But there is some difference between both these moves. We need to understand that. Why bishop g4 or why bishop c6? Thank you for following, Timothy. 
what is the difference between these two moves? Bishop g4, so the bishop is not attacked by the king. <laughs> I don't know, I said the first move, I see. They say here one is right and one is wrong. One is a drawing and one is losing move. Bishop c6, why bishop c6? Does anybody see the difference between these two moves? Because I don't know yet why one is why one is drawing and one is losing. Bishop c6 controls a8. But let's say we play bishop c6 first move. What if white just waits? What if white just waits? What to play next? The problem is how to wait with black. Now if the bishop moves anywhere else, white will play d7. So bishop has to be kept on this diagonal. King d8 can be played because of king b8. And if we wait on this diagonal, let's say bishop d7, king b6, but we still have king b8, right? We still have... No, we don't have king b8 because of a7. This is win. Oh, now here, when the bishop moves, let's say, to try to go here, white can play d7 probably. This is the idea somewhere because now bishop capture d7 will be a7, king capture here will be king b7. Not a7 because then again bishop stops. So something like that. I will check the analysis now. Once again black must be accurate after bishop c6. So they say bishop c6 is a mistake. White just waits. Bishop b4. He gets into zugzwang. Yeah, we are right. We are right. Bishop d7, king b6. And bishop e6. Trying to play here. d7. And white wins. And white wins after this. And now if black starts with bishop g4 first move. King b6. He can play bishop f3 back. He can play bishop f3. And this is the drawing fortress. Because now a7... It's just locked. He can't play a8. And d7, king d7, he does not have king b7 here. That is why this is a draw. White tried to play king c5 after this. Trying to go this side. We play king d7, king d4 and just king e6. And white cannot make any progress in this position. 
so if white goes back again we go king d7 and king c8 and this is how we make a draw in this position this was a big difference one is <laughs> drawing and one is losing Now next is a game, game position. I think you might have seen this position. This was a very famous position um, in opposite color in games between Topolov and Shirov. So let's see this game position, King G1, Bishop C3, pawns on G2, H4, Black King e6 bishop f5 pawns on g6 f6 d5 and c4 black to play this is a very famous game i think you might have seen this one white is top of black shiro played in lenaros 1998 black to play and win This is called as one of the immortal games, games of uh, the celebrated games. Has anybody seen this game? You clip the position, okay. Yeah, this is a famous position. So here, they say the normal play would bring white the draw without much trouble. So if black plays in a normal way, let's say king d6. White does not even have to take this pawn. He can just play king f2. King c5 and king e3, similar to the idea we saw before. Okay, let's not analyze this position. Let's see the game, what happened in the game. And here, Shiro found a fantastic resolution of the position. An excellent move played by Shiro. He played here bishop to h3. And this is the move of century bishop h3 double exclamation mark the bishop is sacrificed for a single tempo that is one needed for the king to get to e4 this is the brilliant move played by chiro and now he sacrifices the bishop and let's see the game gh of course if it does not take and just play king f2 we play king f5 if he plays king f2 we play king f5 king f3 and we just sacrifice this bishop for something similar to the game so in the game after bishop h3 white took the bishop gh king f5 now king becomes very active king f2 and black gets this very important square on e4 king e4 bishop capture f6 d4 with the idea a3 so white plays bishop e7 king d3 now his plan is to play king c2 d3 bishop c5 king c4 again attacking the bishop bishop e7 king b3 and now the king must reach c2 which gives a uh, winning position for black and here white resigned 
after king b3 so his idea is to play king c2 next followed by d3 so if white plays here king e1 or king e2 doesn't matter king c2 and white bishop cannot defend both the pawns so let's say bishop b4 d3 okay there is no waiting move anyway but even if still it was black to play he can just play a3 and sacrifice one of the pawns <laughs> yes this is a brilliant game by shiro and very famous position in opposite color bishop and games so when we are studying this we should definitely not miss this game so the tempo is more important in this kind of end games than material so just to reach e4 in time black sacrifices this bishop Next, king g5, black, king f7, bishop on d4, black bishop h1, pawns h4, b5, a7, and black pawn on g6. Hello, VVCS. It takes Indian 5 minutes to find bishop h3. Shiro is a genius. Wow, that was a brilliant game. So this is a white to play and win. h5 black will take g h5 so far black bishop is doing a great work stopping both these pawns so we need help of our king to go to the queen side to make any progress No, h5 he will just take this pawn and then he will take his king to the queen side let's say king e6 king d7 king c8 and if he stops this both squares there is no way for white to make progress You mean king f4? King f4 then he will play king e6. And stop again. Our king. So somehow our idea is to get this king to the queen side. Bishop b6. So he will wait. Bishop b6. Again, he will just wait. Bishop g2. C6. 
Sex Hero Style King G7 Bishop G7 Again takes But he stops just in time After King F6 This time we are not in time to uh, get extra tempo Someday I love your endgame series Keep them coming Thank you so much King f4 again king e6 so we need to find some idea to get the king to the queen side thank you for following bishop c5 so bishop c5 then a black waits bishop c5 he just waits bishop g2 thank you Coreberos. king at six also he waits he just waits so black is just waiting move and when we try to go to queen side he he brings the king b6 so bishop g2 how to bring the king if we don't bring the king there is no progress here and we teleport the king straight to d8 <laughs> just lift this and keep on d8 yes then he will also lift his king and keep on b7 bishop f6 so he waits bishop g2 King g4, g3, king h2. I will move the bishop. Bishop b6, bishop d8. So let's say black waits anyway. What next after that? I think I'm fine. I find some idea here. So let's say bishop f6 first move. I want to play bishop f6 first move. Now he waits. Let's say bishop b7. We play h5. Black is forced to take it or else we have h6. Or even take this. So black has to take the pawn. And now instead of taking the pawn, we play king f5. And try to go this side. This. Thank you for cheering, Sabrina. And now we are stopping the pawn on h4. And how will black play in this endgame? King e8, then king e6. And we go to these black squares. We go to this. So let's say after bishop f6, he plays bishop e4. Stopping this idea. Still we play h5. Sacrifice. And now we play king f4, attacking the bishop. Bishop moves, king e5. He waits. Now, now we just wait also. Bishop h4. And king goes to the queen side and wins. Yes, this was nice. The first move is bishop f6. Good move. Thank you for following Levy. Bishop g2 was played h5 gh and after king f5 black resigned because white reaches the queen side yes thank you james blunder for giving a five subs Wow, thank you, Badur. And nice to have you here. 
I always feel happy when you are with us. Now next one. You already gifted us today 10 subs. Wow. That's crazy. And E5. Bishop B5. And Bishop on G4. More energy. Thank you for following Michael. The shadow. Okay, have a good day to you, James. Bishop and pawn versus the pawn. Now after um, opposite colors, now we are talking about bishops of the same color. So we finished examples of opposite color. Now this is same color bishops. And they write here, these endgames were first subjected to thorough analysis in the mid 19th century by Italian player Centurini. Later significant additions to the theory were made by G.M. Auerbach. Try to play and win this. So this is better than opposite color bishops because opposite color bishops cannot uh, stop each other but this can challenge each other. Bishop d7. Thank you, James, for gifting sub to VVCS. You are very generous and kind. Hello, Will Twitch, read him, hydrate, and take care. Thank you for reminding me. you buddy and I will join in your streams tonight so bishop d7 bishop goes to e2 Thank you, James, once again, for all your subs and support. Bishop d7, bishop c8. So bishop d7, bishop e2, bishop c8. Then he will stop from bishop b5. Yes, he is on fire. Also in our stream. <laughs> he is on fire in his own streams, but he is also on fire in our streams here. Yes, so black will try to defend either from this diagonal, um, this diagonal or from this diagonal. Bishop a6 and bishop c8. Bishop a6. If you play bishop c8, I will just take your bishop. Bishop e2. I will play bishop h3. Yes, and everybody, Badr is playing a streamer's tournament tomorrow and he made a club. So everybody join his club on Leeches. It is called as Blunder Masters. Let me find a link for it. I can share with you everyone. Just a moment.
All right, so this is the link for Badur Selice's team. And tomorrow he is playing a tournament with, um, with Streamers Battle. So everybody join his team and let's support him. He is also playing and I will also be playing for his team. Yeah, Doug, sorry about knight bot. Bishop d7 and bishop c8. Again, bishop d7, he will play bishop e2, bishop c8 and bishop b5. Bishop b7, then c6. So many ideas here. One moment. Yeah, I think this is uh, first we have to play bishop d7. Too weak, too slow. Hello. Now bishop goes to e2, so that bring on this diagonal. And now our idea should be to play the bishop h3. And to get on c6, so bishop g2 and c6, and we can win this endgame. So it doesn't matter where the bishop is. Next move, bishop c6, and we challenge this bishop in. White to move wins by driving the enemy bishop from one diagonal and then interfering along the other diagonal. So bishop d6, bishop d1. Bishop h3, bishop a4, bishop g2 with the idea bishop c6 and white wins. Now what if the same position is black to play? What if the same position is black to play? Can black prevent this and make a draw? Looking very pretty, thank you. So the exact same position with the back to play. So we know the idea for white. It is to challenge the bishop and then bring to c6. So if we want to make a draw in this endgame, our king should stop this bishop c6. So it has to be either king d4, king c5 or king d5 and king c5. Is bishop h3 different from bishop b2? Not really, it's just, doesn't matter where we play, it's just the idea to bring on c6. Thank you for following Red Gryffindor. You must be Harry Potter fan. Can this plan be prevented? Yes, it can. If black king reaches on king c5. So black just plays king d4. Bishop d7. Bishop d1. And after bishop g2, he just plays king c5. And now this is a draw, they say. This is a draw because white can't play bishop c6 and there is no way to make progress in this position. But if first move black plays king d5, it's a mistake. King d5 is a mistake because bishop d7, bishop d1. And he just plays bishop c6 check and d7, d8 queen. That is why if we reach such kind of position, we have to stop bishop c6. So our king should not be on this side. It should be on c5 square and we stop bishop c6 and thus we make a draw. So remember, if we reach this position king on c5, that's what we want to achieve. 
because right now it looks like easy idea but later we will need it in complex in games king a7 black king a5 pawn b6 bishop uh, c8 bishop e4 white to play when will you play weavers i'm thinking i will create a simul soon i have not decided yet when but i'm planning to make a simul against weavers tomorrow let's see because tomorrow is the biggest festival in india we have diwali tomorrow and it is a celebration for a few days so my my relatives and my friends will come to visit me and we have celebration so let's see <laughs> diwali simu it's the festival of lights the biggest festival in india whole year so this is something we wait for a whole year just like um just like americans have christmas we have diwali in india now we have a similar position but we have moved the same position all the way on the left side of the board so what's the difference here white to play bishop a3 a3 you mean a6 he will play bishop f3 are you indian yes i'm indian Bishop e2. Where is e2? Is here. <laughs> what is happening, guys? This board is, pawn is going this side. I hope there is no confusion. Thank you for following, Shroffy. Bishop f3. Bishop e2. Oh, okay. You mean bishop a6? Bishop f3, you will go bishop e2. I will not take it. I will just move back to e4. Where do you live in India? I live in Maharashtra. He will just keep moving the bishop. I love India and I like Indian players like Anand. Yes, also all Indians like Anand. This is winning for white. This is winning. White to play and win. You're from Mumbai. Okay. Okay, so what about bishop b7? Like that, bishop b7, bishop moves. We just make a waiting move. Now the threat is b7, bishop a6 to stop that. And we can just play bishop g4. What black will play? Black is in Zugzwang here. Black is in Zugzwang. Or we can also play 
Oof. I got scared. <laughs> People are lighting firecrackers outside in celebration. Okay, so bishop e2 also we can play. Bishop c8. And now again waiting move and black is in Zugzwang. So we have to get this position and it is Zugzwang for black. Because now he can't move the bishop anyway. And when he moves the king, when he moves the king, we play bishop a6. And next followed by b7 is winning. Now next is tragic comedy, tragic comedy. Yes, I don't like firecrackers, but people do outside. King e2, black king c6, pawn on c3, black pawn a3, bishop f6, and bishop h2 and this is a tragic comedy so it is a game position and something funny happened in this game So this is a game between Savchenko and Krivonosov, played in 1989. And this is really funny. I will show you what happened here. So black spawn is going this side, white spawn is going this side. And in the game, black played bishop e5. Bishop capture e5, king d5. He moved the bishop, he played king c4 and black won this game. Black won this game because now a2 and a1 but so many wrong moves are happening here first of all after bishop e5 bishop e5 king d5 there is no need to move the bishop but it can just bring the king king d3 now if a2 there is one moment yeah a2 there is just Bishop moves and c4 check will be draw. He'll be winning actually. He'll be winning. I'm sorry. He'll be winning. Take this queen. So bishop e5, bishop e5, king d5, king d3. And now it will be a draw. It takes white goes to take this pawn. And we just reach this pawn and game, which is a draw. But with two, two strong players playing, this happened. And this is quite funny. Tragic comedy. I just played here and in fact lost this game after king c4. So next is a very famous position again. I think you might have seen this. The most famous position in same colored bishop endgames. In c8, in c6, white pawn b7, bishop on d8, black bishop h2. And white to play and win. This is kind of position we all see and we all forget. I think I have seen this position so many times, but every time I get it on the board, I, I forget the answer to this. 
All my dreams are tragic comedies. <laughs> You're funny, Joe. This position is very tricky. This there is some uh, idea in this one. So let me think. I face a lot of problem in Rook and Games. Can you help? Yes, of course, we will go to Rook and Games also, Risha. After Bishop and Games, the next chapter is Rook and Games. So do join in. in. Do join in with us. This is white to play and win. You have to get the white bishop to a7. Bishop f6 So let's say Bishop f6 here Now what is black defense? What is black's defense here? If he just waits Then we can go to a7 We can go to a7 And this is how we attack attack this bishop and win. That is why after bishop f6, black has to go king b6 to stop that from happening. This is black's defense. So this is something we need to calculate. So bishop a5, bishop a5, but the idea is to reach this square. I will wait, bishop g3. Or yeah, bishop g3. Then bishop e1, one moment, bishop a5, bishop g3, bishop e1. Then we reach a7. So I must be missing something from defense after bishop a5. Okay, so the defense is after bishop a5, black will play bishop d6. After bishop b4, he will just go back and we can't play bishop c5. Join this tournament. What kind of tournament is it? Chess with my life. Thank you for following.
Yeah, this one is quite tricky. We have to gain a time on the black bishop. I think I found it. I think I found it, but I'm not sure. I have seen this position already, but I forget every time. So let's imagine, let's imagine the same position if the black bishop is not on h2 and instead let's say on g3 or you know anywhere else. If it's on g3, we can play bishop h4 and when the bishop moves, we can play bishop f2 and bishop a7. So we have to make him move the bishop somehow. Okay, I think I found it. I think I found it. So first move, we just wait. We just wait. Let's say anywhere, bishop g5. Now the idea is to go this diagonal. So black has only defense and that is king b6. And now we have to pass the move to black. We have to create a zugzwang. So let's say we wait. Now the king cannot... But king can go to c6. Yes, king can go to c6. I want it to play like this. Bishop e7. And when the bishop moves, then we check and we reach the same position. And then, then we can play bishop h4. Alright, it's time to see the solution, I guess. This is a composition by Agapok in 1981. No, no, not this, not this. This six one. Sorry, this is a composition by Santorini in 1847. So why just place bishop h4? So first move doesn't matter. We just wait. The bishop wants to go to b8. If it manages to go there, the fight will be over immediately. So black tries to prevent it. King b6 or king b5. There is also king b5. We give check. King a6. Black has to prevent bishop to go to a7. And now he waits a move. And the best square for waiting is bishop c5. Bishop c5. And now we will understand soon why. Bishop c5. The bishop has to move on either one of these squares. So let's say bishop e5 and then we go back to the starting position bishop e7 now the threat is to play bishop d8 and bishop c7 so he goes back in b6 or king b5 bishop d8 king c6 so we reach the same starting position but the bishop is no more on h2 and now we play bishop f6 and when the bishop moves, we play bishop d4, followed by bishop a7, bishop b8, this idea. Wow. So again, the answer was bishop h4. King, B, king b6, bishop f2, king here, and bishop c5. They write here, if we play any other square, let's say instead of bishop c5, we go bishop e3. We can go bishop d6.
Okay, and now if we try to go to the same position, there is no bishop here. After that, oh my god, this is very complicated. But the idea is simple. We just have to reach the same position with black to move. This is the answer. Bishop c5 and bishop moves. And bishop d4 with the idea bishop a7 and b8. Thank you for following. Big sock. Alright, so we will see one more last position for today. Let's see last complex position for today and then we will stop the stream. King d4 Pawns on b4, c3, e3, f4, h4, black king d6, pawns on a6, b5, d5, f5, h5, and the bishops are on f3, and black bishop on f7. And let's try to solve this. Yeah, chess is very complex. You are right. Let's try to solve this. This is um, white to play and win. And also last position. This is um, the book Dovritsky's Endgame, Endgame manual. You see this one? Yes. You want to study it? I'm happy for you. Hello, Fernando Visk. Come on, let's try to find this. Let's try to figure this one out. This is a triangulation. Now, if the same position was black to play, Black would be in Zugzwang. Black would be in Zugzwang. Because he cannot move the bishop. His bishop is defending both these pawns. If he goes here, we take this pawn. Otherwise, if he goes here, again we take this pawn. If he goes here or here, we take this pawn. His king cannot move. King e6, there is bishop d5. And king c6, there is king e5. So maybe we can, we can try to reach the same position with with black to play yes yes you are right triangulation would be the idea He can't move the king, so he has to keep moving the bishops. So that makes our job easier to calculate. So forget about king moves for black. Hello, 
of iced bishop g2 he will play bishop e6 or bishop g8 so the goal is to reach the same position with black to play bishop e2 we need to calculate bishop e8 and bishop g6 so you are saying bishop g2 if bishop e6 then bishop h3 i will go back d7 black will just keep defending the pawns e2 f1 g2 h1 f3 okay one moment so michael suggests bishop e2 now let's say i play bishop g6 in support of this pawn f1 i will go here bishop g2 i will wait Step f3, we reach the same position again with white to play. King d3, king d3 then, then he can move the king. So we can't waste move with the king. He can just move the king. So we have to play the move with bishops. Thank you for following chess gods. We have to move the bishop and black will move the bishop. So this is straightforward idea so we need to find a way to reach this position again with black to play you missed h1 okay so your idea was bishop e1 up here up f1 he will go bishop g8 bishop h1 then he will not go to f7 he will go to e6 and when you play bishop f3 he will go bishop f7 like that i will follow you on leeches can i of course you can so make it easier only think about bishop moves for both the sides Okay, too weak, too slow. See you next time. Happy Diwali to you too. Now I want to make a draw for opposite colored bishops. You too. Thank you for following. D1, D2 b3 okay so d1 uh, c2 b3 so bishop d1 let's say black plays c2 b3 b3 then bishop a2 i will go here bishop b1 i will wait again here how to do it after h1 we waste another tempo with g2 but he will not play bishop f8 he will play bishop g8 and bishop e6 or bishop e8 and bishop g6 
fight to play and win. Good evening, GG Hellis and Satyan. Happy Diwali to you too. Okay, I will think for five more minutes and then I will see the analysis. So let me think. This is so tricky. If this is a win for white, then I don't know chess. This is a win. Again, we have to reach the same position with black to play and we are winning. That's the idea. We have to try to waste a move somewhere. <laughs> Sacrifice h5, then it would be 0 1. You have seen this, yes. Bishop d1, okay, one minute. Bishop d1, Bishop g6, Bishop b3, Bishop f7, Bishop c2. Then I will play bishop g6. If I go bishop e6, you will play here. And you get this position. But what if I play bishop g6? to waste a tempo in this position. Position. Bishop g6, bishop d3, bishop at seven. g6. Okay, time for us to see the solution. This is a composition by Yuri Auerbach in 1954. So the correspondence between f3 and f7 squares is obvious to win. It is necessary only to give black the move. So white starts with bishop e2 here. Let's go through the moves and see the idea. Now black has two moves, bishop g6 and bishop e8. Bishop e8. Let's check both one by one. Bishop d3. Again two moves, bishop d7 and bishop g6. Okay, I will check all. Let's go with bishop g6. Bishop c2, 
bishop h7 bishop b3 bishop g8 bishop d1 how did he do it how did he do it oh my god one second so bishop e2 bishop e8 bishop d3 and let's consider bishop d7 so black has to defend this pawn in either of these ways bishop d7 then he waits bishop c2 now he cannot go bishop c8 because of bishop d1 so he has to go bishop e6 bishop d1 and then bishop f3 oh my and if first move bishop e2 he goes bishop g6 then bishop d3 bishop h7 bishop f1 bishop g6 bishop g2 bishop f7 and bishop f3 and if he plays bishop g8 then bishop e2 bishop f7 and bishop f3 it is like even after seeing the solution i am not sure what is happening <laughs> so we just have to lose i will see it again because i need to bishop e2 bishop e8 bishop d3 bishop g6 we force him to go back to h7 and bishop b3 this is kind of position that even after looking at the solution today i may not able to tell tomorrow and bishop f7 bishop f3 and white wins our back and his bishop studies yes my head hurts also mine but at least in this position the kings were on the same place we just had to consider bishops so we have to move uh, the bishops and lose the tempo on b3 because this here, here and they say that we need to find corresponding squares where the bishop has to be okay okay i don't i don't expect us to remember this solution for long the thing is black has such limited squares to switch to defending his weakness and white has all sorts of ways to attack them all right with this position it is time for us to stop this end game series stream even if you can't find a way it has to be there this is like a maths problem right we know there is a solution but we just need to find a way to do it and also that is not easy so this was fun and the next chapter will be will be um will be bishop versus knight so there are some end games we need to see about bishop versus knight and then we will enter rook end games the biggest chapter of all the end games and that will take a long long time so stay with us and this we will soon this we will finish very soon bishop versus knight and then we will start rook end games and there are a lot of situations in rook end games it's like first we will deal with rook versus pawns then when both sides have rooks then the pawns on different sides but they are the most important chapter of the end game so do join us on that chapter and i will take a break now so today we have um also some guests at home and tomorrow we have diwali celebration so i wish you all a very happy diwali and i will try to join tomorrow to wish you again hope you will be with me and it's a pleasure to have you all especially in this end game series which is uh, very difficult to study alone so it's great to have a group together to study end games. It helps us all very much. 
<laughs> yeah, you remember always keep your rooks passive. I'm very excited to start rook end games really. But I don't want to jump. I want to go finish this end game first, bishop versus knight. And then we will start rook end games. So let's just make a raid and stop here. So let us raid. Um, maybe let's raid Levante, Grandmaster Tranquilizer. Let me see what he is doing. Oh, he is going for 12 hour stream. Of course, let us raid him and cheer him up so i will raid grandmaster tranquilizer and wish you all a great day and good night see you tomorrow or next time i will try tomorrow bye Tonight, I, I don't know. I'm not sure tonight. Because we have some guests that help. It depends. Bye, everyone.